Let's go! Hey there, I'm Tori Beach, a solo wedding videographer, and we're back again with another episode of I Do's and Don'ts, where I sit down with other wedding professionals to talk about the do's and don'ts of all things weddings. Today, I'm really excited to be sitting down with my friend, Amanda Bear, who is a hairstylist and makeup artist. Hey Amanda, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk all things hair and makeup with you. But yeah. first, I want to talk a little bit about you. Um, what is the name of your company and how long have you been in the wedding industry? So I own Something You Salon and Spa. Um, the salon itself has been open for, it'll be five years uh, this coming May, actually. Wow. And okay. then I have been in the wedding industry as a hairstylist and makeup artist for probably close to 10 years now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you have some experience, you know. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love, we're going to jump right into it because I love these do's and don'ts and I want to talk through it. Um, the one that you will start with for our first do is to schedule regular hair and skin care um, appointments. So why, why do you have that as a do? I'll, I'll start with the makeup aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, scheduling regular appointments with your esthetician is incredibly important uh, prior to your wedding. And I'm not talking like two weeks before your wedding, that's the only facial you get. Right. You, in like a year in advance, start making those right. appointments uh, because what, some of the biggest issues that we run into as far as skin with makeup is having somebody that's overly dry yep. or having somebody that's prone to acne on their face. Oh. So what, what in this, and like having regular uh, aesthetics appointments will do is it'll help kind of balance out your moisture on mm -hmm. your face and it just makes your makeup set so much better. Um, when you have a lot of dry skin, the makeup tends to look flaky and there's not really anything that a makeup artist can do about that. Okay. Um, and then as far as like acne and stuff like that goes, again, getting on a good skincare regimen, um, even if that means going to a dermatologist and kind of figuring mm -hmm. out if you need something a little stronger mm -hmm. um, because we're makeup artists. We're not miracle workers. Like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we can cover the discoloration and stuff of acne, but you're still going to see the texture of it. Sure, sure. Okay. And then as far as like hair, hair, making sure that your color is, you know, properly maintained and cared for. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that we see a lot uh, is people that don't get regular haircuts, updos are extremely difficult on those hair textures just really? because you get frizzy and dry really oh. easily. So just having a good hair care routine uh, makes our job a lot easier as a hairstylist and it makes the updo look that much better. I didn't even think about that. So yeah. as far as let's say that, you know, they, they've just gotten engaged and they're like, okay, we're planning a year out in advance. What would that, um, that skin and hair care routine look like from now till their wedding day? Absolutely. So as far as like hair care goes, if your hair is in pretty decent shape, usually we want to see you back in the salon every 12 weeks. That's okay. just for like a maintenance haircut appointment, color, whatever. Okay. Um, if, if you've got a little bit of work to do, I would say probably every six to eight weeks. And that would include some deep conditioning treatments and, and regular trimmings. Um, as far as skincare goes, I'm speaking for my esthetician, so okay. I'm not 100% on this, <laughs> but uh, based off of what she normally tells people, every six to eight weeks is generally good to see her. Okay. Okay. So almost almost similar. Like you would kind yeah. of schedule the same thing for your hair and for your um, yep. skin. Okay. Um, now this is, I'm going to jump to a don't because this is kind of in the same line. But you mentioned don't do anything drastic to your hair a year before. Uh, by drastic, give me an example. So if you like want to put just black hair color on your hair and you decide for your wedding that you want to be platinum blonde <laughs> or have like really, really um, light balayage or whatever, that's not going to be a process that is going to be easily accomplished by a hairstylist in less than six months. Okay. Um, honestly, it usually takes about a year to transition to somebody with that drastic of a change okay. while keeping the integrity of their hair intact. Like right. it's, it's definitely doable in a shorter amount of time, but you might not have much hair left at the end of that process. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That makes, I mean, again, it makes sense, but I think, yeah. you know, 
I would even assume a haircut. So like if you would just like long hair or an updo, don't go for like a buzz cutter or a bob or something, right? Probably not. I mean, your hair, it, I, if you were like as short as a pixie, uh -huh. you know, it, it's going to take a few years to get it to a length that you can actually wear it in, into a formal style. Right. Um, so, so yeah, just like small, small changes are fine and good. Yep. Um, but drastic ones, don't do it. Okay. <laughs> Wait till after the wedding and yes. then chop all your hair off. Um, so the other thing that you have on your do is to have a vision. Um, but also with that vision, make sure you stay true to who, who you are like every day. Um, yes. So talk to me about why that's an important do. Yeah. So one of the things that we do with each one of our brides is we send out questionnaires. Mm -hmm. We send out both a hair questionnaire and a makeup questionnaire, just kind of trying to get an idea of what their everyday routine is like mm -hmm. um, on a regular basis what their kind of look that they're going for with their wedding, how much experience that they have with their hair and makeup mm -hmm. and kind of the things that they're comfortable with. Um, so it's really important when you do come in for a trial uh, beforehand to have some type of vision. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing with that is to make sure that your vision and the pictures that you're showing your artist all are very similar. Okay. If you have okay. like, you know, a polished updo and then a down, like all down romantic boho style. Mm -hmm. That's like very, very conflicting looks. Right. Um, right. So as a hairstylist and a makeup artist, I want to make sure that your vision for your hair and makeup and the pictures that you're showing me are all kind of similar. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you're all over the place, it makes it, it makes it really hard and you're mo more than likely not going to like what sure. your artist is doing. Right. Um, right. So it's just really important to make sure that you have an idea, like bring pictures, make sure that those pictures are all somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. And then also like one thing that I hate doing is, you know, we will have somebody come in and they just like, they're, they never wear any makeup, but then the day of their wedding, they want like full on Kardashian glam, like yeah. Pinterest contouring and baking and like all of this other right. stuff. And it's like that makeup is pretty, mm -hmm. but first of all, it's not pretty in person. It's pretty like when it's being photographed and that's about it. Otherwise it looks very cakey on mm -hmm. the skin. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but a lot of times when that much makeup gets put on to somebody, they look like a different person. Right. And this is your wedding day. Like I always tell people like, yeah, go with the trends, like within reason, right. but make sure that you're still maintaining something classic because you're going to be looking back at these like 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Right. And you want to make sure that you look back at your pictures and like, you still like how you, how yeah. you look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Cause I'm also not a makeup wearer. Um, and I, one thing that's interesting for me though, if I put a lot of makeup on my face is that I, it feels really heavy and I'm uncomfortable cause I'm not used to it. And I feel yeah. like also I'm not careful, um, cause I, I'm not, I'm not used to it. So again, you know, I rub it on something or whatever and it just gets everywhere. Um, yeah. and that's just partly me. Um, but that's also something that I think that brides really should think about on their wedding day. They, you don't want that to be a distraction to yourself. Yeah. Like, no. you don't want to think about it. Um, and I, I mean, I know I've, I've had some makeup work done with you and I have loved how I looked and it didn't feel heavy and I still felt very elegant and, and pretty and I looked like me. Um, yeah. And I think that's a, a very appropriate balance to have on your wedding day. <laughs> but, you know, like, honestly, I'm a firm believer that makeup is supposed to enhance your natural beauty. And if you're putting so much on your face that, like, you literally can't tell that you have freckles or right. anything like that, right. like, you're, you're, you're masking, like, who you are. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there's just something really beautiful about somebody that, like, let's, let's accentuate what you have and mm -hmm. make you look done up, mm -hmm. but still feel like you. Um, because, if they don't, a lot of times they end up feeling self-conscious all day. Like, and I, oh, I would yeah. hate that. Yeah. No, not the day to be feeling that way. No. Not at all. <laughs> um, no, I think, I think those are really great tips. And, you know, I really feel like it's stuff that you see these beautiful pictures on Pinterest and Instagram. And there's all this pressure to look and feel, you know, look like those things that you see. And um, I think trusting your 
hairstylist and your makeup artist to do what is going to be perfectly you is really the thing that you're going to want to look for when you're booking yep. a vendor. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, those are super great do's. I love them. We'll go into the last don't. Um, <laughs> I think, again, you kind of think this is self-explanatory, but sometimes things aren't. Don't wait until the last minute to book your appointment. <laughs> so what are, what are, what's the time frame? What are we looking at? Yeah, so I feel like 10 years ago, it was perfectly acceptable to wait like six months before your wedding to book your hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, in this day and time with, you know, makeup and hair services being so popular for weddings now, like makeup used to not even be a thing 10 years ago. People wow. just did it themselves and, and it was updos and, and formal styling. Oh. Makeup was more like what they did up in like Chicago and the bigger cities. Okay. But yeah. over the last probably five or six years, makeup has really like, that's what people want done. Mm -hmm. um, good, reputable places that are experienced that do weddings on a regular basis are booking out. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I would always recommend at least a year out, like as soon as you know that you're getting engaged, right. hair and makeup should be up there with like, um, your, your other like high photographer vendors, like, venue, yeah. hair and makeup. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you are like extremely particular about mm. the type of look that you're wanting. Um, it's definitely something that needs to be up there on priority. Yeah. And then you were saying too, that like you come in and you do a, a trial beforehand. Um, yep. so kind of walk through what, what does that look like and how does that work in the whole process between booking you and, and the day of? Yeah. So it, it varies. Um, what we typically recommend just because we have a portfolio of our work out there, right? you know, and most people, when they book us, they know that they're going to get, you know, good quality work. I recommend them doing their trial no more than a month before their wedding date. Oh, um, Okay. Yeah, because if you do your trial too far out, mm -hmm. even in even in three or four months, your style is going to change, your mm. hair is going to change. Mm -hmm. If you get your trial done in the wintertime, but you're getting married in the summertime, you have the humidity to combat. So you're oh. not really, there's certain things like that, that you just have to make sure that you're taking into account, like you right. might be more pale in the winter than you are in the summer. So your, right. your makeup colors are going to look different on your right. face. Right. Um, so I always recommend two weeks to a month before your wedding is, is when okay. we want to see you in for your final trial. Our pricing includes our trial. If they want to try us out beforehand, then we do that. They just have to pay for like a makeup application sure. and hairstyle in the salon beforehand. Okay. So, okay. okay. So there yeah. is a way for them to, to test you out Yep. before it's a month before yeah. they get yeah okay yeah okay they can absolutely book that or like what we've had a lot of brides do is they use us for their engagement sessions oh yeah and, yeah so yeah that works that's too. a great idea because then yeah. you know again every every person on your team for your wedding day you really should yeah. feel comfortable with and I think that yeah. that's it's hard to know when so many of them really don't kind of show up in your life until like the day of <laughs> like you get little <laughs> meetings with people so I think knowing that is really really helpful well Amanda thank you so much for coming on and talking about these do's and don'ts I really hope those of you guys who are watching took some little nuggets of wisdom um, if you're in the beginning process of planning your wedding um, make sure to schedule early and do routine yep. maintenance. <laughs> but uh, Amanda, thank you again so much for being on here. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to leave all of your comments below in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for topics that you wanna hear about or from specific wedding vendors you wanna hear from, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.